Rebuilding a Stuart Models Twin Launch Model Steam Engine Part 17. Looking at the reversing valve gear. And here it is, and in this clip I'm looking at it. When I received this engine to rebuild, all I received was a box of bits, and I wasn't sure at first how many of the parts were there. But as it turns out, most of the parts were in the box. This is one of the reversing arms, complete with a taper pin, and this is the main reversing lever, which is a bit of a funny shape, and I'm not quite sure how it all goes together just yet. The first thing I need to do though, is to make some pins to hold the valve gear together. I'm not just going to use 7BA bolts, this is very bad practice. And luckily, in my box of wondrous artifacts and parts for Stuart engines, I found some genuine Stuart 7BA studs. And by loctiting the 7BA nut onto one end of one of these studs, it makes a perfect cross pin to go through the fork on the valve rod which holds the die block that runs in the expansion link. And just in case you're wondering what a die block is, this is a die block, and it allows the expansion link to slide from side to side for forward and reverse. This clip shows the reversing lever with the reversing arm and the drop arm ready to fit to the engine. This reversing gear looks to me to be a little bit unusual. Normally a reversing lever goes up and down, this one goes from side to side. The same difference, it does the same job, and it's not what I'm used to seeing on a Stuart engine. When the owner sent me this engine to repair, he included a Stuart model's drawing for the engine itself. But it was just the drawing of the engine, and it didn't include a drawing for the reversing gear. Reversing gear on a Stuart engine is generally an optional extra, and this Stuart twin launch engine is shown on the drawing as just having an eccentric at each end, and the engine will only go in one direction. This of course is an entirely different arrangement, where you have two eccentrics at each end of the engine, and an expansion link at each end of the engine, both linked together with this reversing arm. And this reversing gear is called Stevenson's Link Motion, and most of the Stuart range of engines use this type of reversing. And as you move the expansion link back and forth like this, you're selecting which eccentric is going to be used to rotate the engine. And as these eccentrics are 180 degrees out of phase with each other, that's what causes the engine to go forwards or backwards. It's fiendishly clever, yet very simple at the same time. Just in case you think I've lost it, I haven't. I'm just tapping this pin into place. But you will notice I've got a counterweight at the other side, so I don't put too much pressure on it. And the hammer blows are much lighter than the sound on the video. What we have here is a bit of general reassembly. Tightening lock nuts, tightening bolts, and putting the whole thing back together. And as soon as any of the moving parts are put back together, I give them a coat of light machine oil. It actually took a lot longer than this to put this valve gear back together. It's very, very small, and my hands are very, very big. And most of the video I got of this was just the back of my hand. So I had to do quite a bit of editing to make it watchable. Whenever you watch any of my videos, you're actually watching the job being done. I don't rehearse. Most of the time the videos are running in real time and it's me actually doing the job. So if I drop a piece on the floor, I will skip that bit. I won't just focus on the engine while I rummage about on the floor for something that I've lost. But most of the time, like this for instance, this is just the sequence exactly as it went together. Only occasionally do I retake some of the sequences, and that's usually because I've got the camera angle completely wrong, and all you can see, like this bit, is the back of my hand. In this clip, I'm fitting the links that connect the reversing arm to the end of the expansion link. And this link drags the expansion link back and forth. On this particular one though, it did need some packing washers. The washers were originally fitted to the engine, so something went a little bit wrong here. But it's nothing to worry about, packing washers are perfectly acceptable. And the valve gear runs very, very smoothly. Okay, there aren't any eccentrics in the middle yet, but that's a formality. It's very encouraging to be able to move the reversing lever like this, and for the expansion links to slide through the die blocks so smoothly. In the next episode I will be fitting the eccentrics, and then the fun begins. Once the eccentrics are fitted, it will be possible to run the engine. But that's it for the moment. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.